concept. A religious key or a religious re something that is redundant that we do only on Sunday, you'll find out that the word, when God speaks, things happen. Yes, and when God speaks to you, yes, yes. come on somebody, yes, yes. you ought to be able to listen. Amen. Intimacy is important in this touch. Because not only is it powerful, it changes your entire life. This touch is not only intimate, it is a powerful touch. This touch told Peter, Simon Peter, <laughs> first, his name was Simon, but after Jesus touched him, his name changed to Peter. I wonder... Have we got anybody here who had an experience? When God touched you, you uttered something that you didn't know you had uttered. Amen. Yes. Or you felt something that you've never felt before. Amen. Not only Peter, but just like Jacob. In the old trickery as a king, God made him king over Israel. All it was was a touch from the master. God has a way that, that is mighty sweet. Can I get a witness? Yes. Amen. His touch. Change, if you don't believe it, check it out in the Old Testament. Change Abram to Abraham. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Read your Bible. His touch transformed and revealed Elijah to Elijah. Yeah. Made it more powerful. This man, this, this, this king of kings, this Lord of Lord, touches anything he touches is good. Everything he touches, it has to change. And when he touches, you have to be willing for the change. Let me tell you, God, don't worry about little things like you and I. But when he touches you, he means that not only he be glorified, but that the edification is not only for you, but it's for you to go and tell somebody how good the Lord has been to you. Is there anybody here this morning that has been in the court? Come on, somebody. Yes. But when God touched him, turned him into a leader of a nation. You know the story well. Moses was able to get the children out of Egypt. Can I get a witness? Anything that God touches that is willing, you can just about bet that he has work for you to do. But yet still, there are many sitting in the pews in this day and time that God Touch somebody to get out of the bed this morning. But still, we just can't wait to get back in the bed. Come on, somebody. Body tired. I've been to church, but I'm through. But he said, remember the Sabbath day. And keep it holy. Can I get with it? Yeah. Jeremiah was a weeping prophet. God made him a powerful man. He changed James' name. To John. Can I get away? Yes. Yes. Everything he touched, everything he anointed, everything he appointed, it was all for his goodness and mercy. And we know the story, the sons of thunder, John and James. Can I get a witness? Amen. Yes. I believe that he touched you and I to allow us to see another day. Yes. Not only did he touch us, but his intimate love allowed us one more time to let go and let God have his way. Amen. Often we take these five senses for granted. And the very one that wakes us up the most is the sense of touch. I would want, before I leave any worship service, is to be in touch with the master. Can I get a witness? There's somebody here that ought to want to get in touch with the master. Doesn't matter what you've been through. Doesn't matter what you've gone through. Doesn't matter what issues you have in your life. It doesn't matter. God knows how to touch your situation. And there's somebody that wants to be touched in this morning. Psalms wrote shackled by heavy burdens. Way beneath the load of pain and death. 
But the writer made it clear. But he said, then, then, in an instant, the hand of Jesus touched me. And now, I am no longer the same. He didn't stop there. He said, he touched me. He couldn't get away from the word. He touched me. Somebody ought to want that touch. Not only on a daily basis, but just so you can move to the next level that God wants you to do. Somebody ought to want that touch just to be able to be delivered out of bondage. Somebody ought to want that touch just to be lifted up high. Not above yourself, but where God can use you. Somebody said, pick me up out the mucky, mighty place. But then it placed my feet on a solid rock. Two minutes on a wandering rock. And then it placed on a solid rock. I want my hope to be in Christ Jesus. Do I have a witness here? Amen. Intimate touch. As close as we get to intimate, it's probably without intimacy with boyfriend and girlfriend or in marriage. But you haven't been in love until you fall in love with Jesus. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You got in here. I say you haven't been in love until you fall in love with Jesus. Solomon said falling in love with Jesus was the best thing that happened to me. And I'm not trying to be sarcastic. There's nothing wrong with boyfriend, girlfriend, wife, husband, husband, wife, children. But there is no love like the love of Jesus. And you don't understand what love is until you love Jesus. You can love everything else. It may break your heart, it may bring pain, it may bring anger, it may bring a lot of things that are uncomfortable to you. Yes. And sometimes it hurts so bad Amen. that you just don't want to go on. But God don't do you like that. That's right. Amen. Your first love, not the first time you thought you were in love, your first love will always be Christ Jesus. Yes. Because see, you don't learn how to love until you meet it for yourself. Yes. Look at somebody and say, one touch. One touch. I'm no longer the same. I'm no longer the same. Intimacy is important, and the Bible speaks of it. And as I get ready to move into the final portions of this message, the touch is not just merely a touch with the finger or the hand. Get that out of your mind. The only way that you can be touched by the Master, He said, They that worship me must worship me in spirit. And in Come on, somebody. Amen. And in truth. Yes. And the truth of the matter is, don't expect God to touch you if you don't have no Holy Ghost in it. Yes. It won't connect. Yes. It's both physical every time. It's just like North and South Pole. There must be some connection. You got to be plugged in to the right source. And in order to get plugged into the right source, you'll know when Jesus touched you. I said, you'll know when he touched you. It's something that you can't explain. Amen. I've yet to see anybody Amen. sit down and explain how the Holy Ghost touched them. Amen. Because see, you don't even know what's going on yourself. Because when he touched, he made things change in your life. You can walk in that door with an attitude. And if the Holy Spirit touch you, yes. it will change your attitude. Yes. And the difference I know in folk just coming to church and folk enjoying the Lord, if you come in the place of worship and leave here with the same attitude, you haven't been to church. You just came to a gathering. And anybody can gather, a crowd can gather. But when you're in the presence of the Holy Spirit, you want to know that God is in the house. When you know that He's in the house, nothing can change that. You know the same. Don't worry about what's on the pew beside you. Who's in front of you? Who's in back of it? Who's on the side of it? All you worry about is lifting up your voice and hands and praise and say, Lord, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. Intimacy of this touch is powerful. 
Here's the booze. Here comes the total booze. When God is intimate, he is powerful. But the utmost portion, when he touched this leper, the leper was transformed. His touch transformed. That's why you're no longer the same. Mm -hmm. Let me define not wealth, but the biblical sense of being transformed. Often folk want an instrumentic thing from God. They want a rush job. They want a quick fix. All they know that they want to feel better. But you got to realize, let's look at what you made of. First of all, we just, he scooped us up out of the ground. And he formed us from clay. Do so I have a witness? Amen. But we didn't really have no serious or any kind of life until he breathed into us. Yes. And gave us the breath. Which gave us the birth. Which made us understand that even from birth to the grave, he didn't leave out the hope and the purpose of our time here on earth. And some folk go through life that are never touched by the master. Now he loves us so much until he looked beyond our faults. When we were out there in the world of sin, when we were out there wandering, puddling around and messing around and whatever, he loved us enough to Allow us one more day. Yes. But it was when that day that somehow in the amen corner you were sitting over there all innocent and you realized that God is a forgiving God. Yes. Yes. All of a sudden you began to realize that even though you couldn't forgive yourself you realized that God had already forgiven yes. when he Stretched his arms wide. Yes. It wasn't so much the centurions and those that crucified him. He was talking about the entire world. Yes. He said, Father, forgive them, yes. for they know not what they do. Yes. In other words, what, 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 what I'm trying to get you to understand in the transformation, were well, you thinking that God will not forgive you? God will not leave you nor forsake you in any given thing. Yes. But until you have been touched yes. by the master yes. coming in or out of a place of worship is null and void. Amen. Amen. Null and void means you're going through the motion. Bound for hell yes. with heaven on your mind. Yes. I ain't going to get too many amens there. Amen. But the touch must transform. I, I, I like that man. I like that lady. They're a nice person. They're a good person. And, and I believe that they can... All is good on the surface. Yeah. But you'll know if they've been touched. Yeah. And the reason you'll know, God is not going to destine you to be the judge of who's been touched. That's oh, right. Yes. Amen. And who hasn't been touched. Amen. Because your spirit will allow you to connect. Yes. Come on, somebody. Amen. Because if you've been transformed, the maker have already conditioned your soul. Yes. Well, you know when you come in contact yes. with another believer. Yes. You don't have to measure what somebody else has. Amen. All you got to do is focus on what you have. And, and like the preacher said last Sunday, use what you got. Because yes. right. as long as you're using what you got, God will put you in touch yes. with those who are have been intimate, those who, yes. good God Almighty, yes. who have known to be powerful. Let me tell you, power don't come every day from Jesus. Right. Power can only come under the anointing. Yes. Come on, I said under the anointing. Yes. So if you're expecting a whole lot of power, oh, get up. Yes. Get up. Get up and allow God to really touch your life. And when you allow him to touch your life, you'll find out that the intimacy of his touch 
brought power, supernatural power, Amen. and in the transforming, Amen. why you're no longer the same, you can't sit there and act like you're having church no more. Right. You're going to have church whether nobody else in here wants to have By the renewing of your mind. I pray that the touch, the intimacy, the power, and this transformation allows you to get up out of your pew when nobody else will get up. See, often we get set in our ways. And being set in your ways. Means you know you're no longer in touch with the master. But that you the same. God doesn't work like that. He doesn't turn on and off like we do. Some mornings you come up in here, it seems like it takes the whole service. For you to catch on fire. Yes. That's all right with me. I'm still going to have me a good time. <laughs> one thing I learned, that the preacher can't preach you happy. That's right. Amen. you got to have some joy of your life. Amen. Preacher can't preach you into heaven. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. you got to want to go there yourself. That's right. Bible says we must work out our own soul salvation. Yes. All right. If this passage opens up and tells us that he transformed this young man from leprosy, then those that are deaf and dumb, not only from the physical side, those that are deaf when it comes to the word of God, God can transform your heart, your soul, and your mind. Often we hear the word, but we don't hear the word. His touch cleanses and transforms. These are sins that you feel that are unforgiven, but God will never, never, never allow me to be in his kingdom because of this and that. You have lied to yourself. And Satan is going to help you live that life yes. as long as you reject what God has already done. Yes. I tell you, God will forgive you. Yes. Oh, help me somebody. God will take care of you. And about everything else, he loves you just that much. All the transformation, intimacy, and all these things from that touch, yes. Yes. we push yes. him away. Yes. Have I got a witness? Yes. He'll transform you. Your dark days and delight days. Yes, yes. Those of us who were doomed. 